Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I am going to take you through my top five favorite paint colors in watercolor. So this means they're not necessarily colors that I recommend everybody has because everybody likes different colors. Some people might like a lot brighter colors or more muted palette. Um, and these aren't necessarily colors that you have to have in your palette. I am going to do a video on that, but these are colors that I just absolutely love and enjoy. And I wanted to share them with you today. So let's dive in and get started. Okay guys, so I am doing this in my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook. I used my Christy Rice stamping set to swatch these colors for you. If you guys have not seen this yet, I did a video on it. This is such an awesome stamp set to do color swatches like these. Um, so that's what I'm using. And then I'm gonna go through the paint colors that I have. So these are gonna be different brands of paints that I've just kind of fallen in love with over time. Um, and I just wanted to share them with you. Okay, let's just jump right in. Um, and I will mention that green is my favorite color. So that is why I have two greens in this top five. Okay, so the first one is a new green that I recently got. Um, and it's from Michael Harding. And I love more neutral kind of natural colors not necessarily bright kind of i always think like more elementary school kind of colors i like more of a muted or i don't know i don't know how to explain it anyway this color is probably one of my favorite greens it actually is um it's called moss green and like i said it's from michael harding it is very much like a an olive color but it's a little bit more olivey than some of my olive greens that I've had in the past. It has quite a bright yellow undertone to it. And I just really enjoy it for bot botanicals. Um, it's just, it's bright and neutral-ish, if that makes sense. It's not like one of those kind of fake, you know, viridian greens. Um, and it just, it's an olivey green, but it has this like brightness to it. And I love olive green. I love olive green from Winsor & Newton the most. Um, unfortunately I don't have much left or in this palette. Um, but this just has a little bit more of a hint of yellow to it that I really enjoy. So you're going to see me using this color a lot more often. Um, but I just find it absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so then the next color that I absolutely love, which you've probably seen me use in the past, I've had it in my palette for a while, but it is hands down one of my favorite greens ever. It's Perline Green from Winsor & Newton, and it's this deep, dark, kind of cool green. And I love it for creating like shadows and depth a lot of, in a lot of my paintings. But also when you just use a light value of it, it's this beautiful eucalyptus color. It also kind of reminds me of like mist, doing like a kind of green, dark forest, misty forest with this color is absolutely stunning. This is hands down probably one of my favorite colors of all time. And I would say this would be a must have in my palette, um, not in just like a limited palette, but my own personal palette. I absolutely love this color. And when I run out, I am going to have to get some more because like, look how deep that is. And I just want to show you kind of how I use it. And even these two together for fun. Let's just mix these two greens together just to see what happens. Cause I don't think I ever have. So I'm going to grab some of the perline green and the moss green and mix it. I know you can't see my palette, but look at them mixed together. Look at that beautiful green takes the darkness of that and then the yellowness to get like more of like a neutral, almost like a sap green. Like look how beautiful that is, the two of them together. So you can mix these two colors and create some beautiful tones as well. Like stunning, I love that. And then another way I like to use these two colors together in a painting, so say I paint like a leaf with my my uh, 
moss green and I always tend to grab my perline green and tap it towards the base just for a little bit of extra depth in my botanicals. I'm going to take a little bit of that color off but just using it kind of as shadows just creates that extra depth in your loose paintings, which I absolutely love. So these two colors and together, oh, two of my absolute favorites. Okay. Hands down. No question. All right. Okay. Let's move on. So my next color, um, is also kind of a new color in my palette because I've swapped out one of my old favorite colors for this color. They're actually very similar, but I find this one a little bit more intense. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love permanent rose from Windsor and Newton. That was always my go-to pink. Um, and then recently I got a collection from Michael Harding and their quinacridone rose is absolutely gorgeous and has become my new favorite pink. It's very, very similar to permanent rose, but I feel like it's almost a little bit more intense, like deeper, brighter. Like look how bright that is. It almost looks like a red, but it's a pink. Okay. I'm just going to lighten it up just so you can see. And the light wash or the light value of this color is very similar to permanent rose. Like it's just so beautiful. And one thing that's really great about this color is that you can mix it and create, because it's so deep, you can create a red. This red right here, I actually made with quinacridone rose. Um, but I'm going to save that little tidbit of information for my next video next week because I'm going to go through my top five must-haves in my palette and I'm going to show you how to use this quinacridone rose to make other colors like red. But look how stunningly bright that is. It's so beautiful. Like, and for my, my, uh, blah, 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 what's it called? You know, florals. <laughs> florals. It's absolutely beautiful. And you can always dull this down too using like the green that we have here. Hold on. I just want to do a quick little, it's just such a beautiful pink, like so pretty. Okay. But I'm going to mix it a little bit with my, uh, my perlene green, just a tad bit, just to show you, you can get like a nice muted kind of dusty rose color with it too, which is really beautiful for a more muted hue of that color. So there you go. There's, there's my third favorite. Okay. So my fourth favorite, if I had to pick a blue, I would probably pick ultramarine. And the only tricky part about ultramarine is that a lot of ultramarines granulate, if not almost all. One of the brands that I found doesn't granulate very much um, and is also not called ultramarine, but it is very much uh, <laughs> close to ultramarine is French Blue by Paul Rubens. This is their professional and I absolutely love this blue. So it looks very much like ultramarine. It's just called French blue. I should actually look at the pigment info, but it's just so beautiful. And it's not as granulating as other ultramarines that I've had. Like, it's just such a beautiful color. Like, I love this and like a cobalt. They're so pretty. The only thing with ultramarines is that they're not always ideal for mixing because they granulate and they separate a lot of the time uh, unless you like that look which is totally cool i'm actually going to show you how it mixes with uh, the moss green because it does separate and it can give you a really cool uh, effect it's not too granulating like it's very very minimal granulation with this one I'm just going to mix it with my, this is with the moss green. Like, look at that. It's almost kind of like a emeraldy viridian, but it's just really, you get that ultramarine look without a lot of the granulation. I'm just going to lighten it up even more. Like how pretty, right? 
And then my favorite mix to use with ultramarine or this color is to mix a little bit of dioxazine purple. Dioxazine purple is not on this list, but if you do, um, you can get this gorgeous, gorgeous, like purpley blue, which is actually in my palette right now, this color that I've mixed. So I would take the, the French blue. Oops, there's a lot of white in there too, I forgot. Um, the French blue and then some dioxazine violet. It's this one, right? <laughs> is it? No, it's this one. My bad. I gotta redo this. Hold on. Hold on. Gotta create a new mixing well. Okay, let's try that again. So French blue with dioxazine violet creates probably one of my favorite colors. Like, it's just so beautiful. It's like this deep blue. There's a bit of a glare, but okay, there you go. See that? Look how stunning that blue is. I love it. And then you can make it more purpley, um, but you could also mix the French blue with a bit of the quinacridone rose to get a similar color. It's like a tiny bit, tiny bit more. It does the same thing if you were to mix purple, really. So yeah, I love it. Oh, here's even more purple. I love this mixture to make this kind of color. And then, and then, if you do that, I'm going to mix a little bit more. Hold on, that's too much. One sec. <laughs> One other colors that I love to mix with this. So you get this like deepish blue purple. Then what I had in here before, add white. And you get this beautiful lavender color. Like ultramarine is probably one of the best colors to mix even just adding a little bit more blue to it like ooh, so pretty with white gorgeous so yeah this is definitely one of my favorite blues of all time okay and then our last color would probably be shocking because I don't even use it a lot but I just admire it from afar no I don't admire it from afar but I don't use it as much as I should um but every time I swatch it I'm just like oh I love this color. And that is, are you ready? Burnt Sienna. I love the burnt kind of orangey brown. It just reminds me of fall and fall is my favorite season of all. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now this one is from Shinhan, this brand that I'm using. But I've used many, or I've swatched a few not many, a few of Burt Sienna different paints. And I just, I love them. I just love that orange, that burnt orangey feeling. It's just so beautiful. I need to use it more in my work for sure. I just need to find more of a purpose for it, but I love it. So I don't know, like what could I paint? Like even just using it for pumpkins, like the shadow in the pumpkin, the depth. Um, I'm trying to think of other things, just fall leaves which it's not even close to fall right now. We're coming on spring. But adding this into like a fall bouquet, just it brightens it up. It's so pretty. I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, that's about it. So those are my five absolute favorite paint colors. And that was hard because there are so many that I love. Um, but I think those are definitely my top five. So I would love to hear what your top five are in the comments below. Please let me know. Uh, I'm not expecting them to be the same as mine at all, um, but I would love to hear what your top five favorites are and brands. So yeah, let us know in the comments below and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.